<laughs> Good morning, Marianne. Good afternoon, Jay Mario, and good afternoon to our viewers across the globe who are currently joining us via Facebook and YouTube live stream for another episode of JMC Edit Trends. So first of all, we would like to thank Jose Maria College for giving us this opportunity to discuss timely and relevant topics using their online platform. I am Warren Elambrosha, your moderator for today's discussion. And joining with us is the JMC Edit Trends Administrator, Mamirna Ambrosha. I would also like to acknowledge our panel in today's discussion, the College of Business Education faculty, joined by Mam Genevieve Cape, Mam Rubilin Masinajong, Sir Ralph Panti, and Sir Alexis Baligo II. Good afternoon. So I know everyone is quite excited to meet our distinguished speaker for today's discussion. And to formally start our program, let us welcome the program head of the College of Business Education, Sir Alexis Baligo II, to give his welcoming address. Hey, good morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I am Alexis Baligo II, Program Chair of the College of Business Education and Maria. I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to everyone for attending this online event. This would have been impossible without the support of the JET team, or otherwise known as Jose Maria College Loop Trends team. And special President, Pastor Apollo C. Kibbo. This week is the culmination in the observance of the Economic and Financial Literacy Week under Republic Act 10922, which is endorsed by the Commission on Higher Education that brings consciousness, knowledge expanding activities on economic and financial literacy. We are now in the penultimate month of the year 2020. And still, we have not yet reverted back to the old normal. This pandemic has affected our way of life and brought along uncertainty established institutions in the country. And even as I speak now, efforts are being done to help our brothers in Luzon after two powerful typhoons unleashed threat to thousands of families there. Many businesses here in our region has felt this crunch topic for today is timely as our esteemed guest speaker who has extensive experience in managing and operating businesses will discuss about visual management again thank you very much and welcome everyone good morning thank you sir alex and so as a reminder to our viewers we will be posting a link in the comment section where you can log in and fill up the details for your e-certificates don't forget to log out at the end of the program. And now to formally introduce our speaker for today's discussion, I give the floor to the Dean of the College of Business Education of Jose Maria College, Dr. Melcher Q. Bombeo. Thank you, Marianne. We are highly honored to have with us this morning one of the most highly respected and renowned businessmen, not only in Davao City, but in the country. An active business leader, he has brought countless accolades and recognition, both from the city and national government, through his dynamic leadership, through the Davos City Chamber of Commerce and Industry, where he has served in various capacity as trustee, president, and chairman of the board. He too is an educator, having been educated from the University of the Philippines in his undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. And from the Asian Institute of Management, he unselfishly shared his time as professor of the University of Mindanao, of University of the Philippines, Mindanao unknown, most likely to many, he is also a banker. 
once holding the position of chairperson of the personal committee and chairperson of the executive committee of the Philippine Banking Corporation. As a civic leader, Okay. Parang walang sound. Ipacheck lang walang sound. Ano mo? Sa internet nila sa atin. Wala, bigla na wala. May nagsalita eh. Tan tanong mo lang si Ano. Okay. Sir, Sir Bell uh, has lost his connection. Sa internet nila sa atin. Bigla na wala. Lost his connection. So, uh, Marianne? So, I think um, <clears throat> Dr. Bombeo has lost his connection. So, as a reminder for uh, our viewers for today, uh, we will be posting a link in the comment section where you can log in and fill up the details for your e-certificates. And don't forget to log out at the end of the program. And during the discussion um, of Sir John Keisano, um, you, you can send your comments, you can send your questions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to log out at the end of the program. Okay, so thank you, Marianne. And during the discussion um, yes, of Sir John Quintano, um, okay. so on behalf of our Dean of College, uh, Sir Dr. Mel Bombeo, uh, it is my privilege to present to you our guest speaker today, uh, uh, Sir John Young Gaisano Jr. Welcome, Sir John Gaisano. I can start? Yes, Sir John. Okay. Uh, this talk of mine is only 30, 30 minutes, so I'll divide it into three parts. Part one is what's happening to the world of economy and business in particular, and then Philippines. And so uh, what am I as a businessman, especially in supermarket, is doing? Um, the whole world was caught uh, flat footed when the pandemic uh, came to the world. Whoever started it, no, it's uh, uh, probably in one country introduced in another country or whatever. No? There's so many fake news, so we have no idea. But uh, the problem is that the world come to a standstill. Bucket, because when this pandemic started, people are so afraid of getting infected, and the government do not know exactly what to do. So the only solution that they know is to quarantine. Quarantine simply means you isolate people so they will not come in contact. No, as much as possible so the disease will not spread. Uh, the problem with this is that when you quarantine, uh, then there are many business that no, cannot survive. If people cannot go out, then they cannot buy. Now, particularly, the one that's most affected is the one in the entertainment industry. What do you mean? Entertainment industry is industry where uh, people like to congregate and come together, such as movie theater, fast food, restaurant, um, malls, you know, so unfortunate for that. You know. And uh, um, and resort. So if people uh, do not go to these places, what will happen? Their sales will drop, 
they will begin to lose money, especially if they borrow money to expand and their expense will go up. So what do they do? Most of them will reduce the number of employees that they hire. Most of the uh, company reduce their uh, uh, the number of people from 50 up to 80 percent. So could you imagine how many people are out of job because of this pandemic? So even that, a lot of people lost their livelihood. They have no income and they will buy less. So what happened? Now many stores are losing money, uh, especially those stores that sells ladies wear, men's wear, children's wear, you know, shoes, bag, and many of those related. So these things are called not essential, simply means that you don't need them to live because we have them. So you don't have to buy something new. If you don't need to buy new clothes, you can wear our old clothes. Is it okay? Uh, Marian, am I okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, many of us may not be aware. Uh, so, what happened in other countries? Well, in one of the strongest economies in the world, actually there are two, no? China and uh, United States. Uh, United States, we have a lot of info because many of our fellow Filipinos actually live there, many of our relatives and friends. In U.S., if you are not aware, there are more than 20,000 retailers that have closed and every week more continue to close. There are thousands of malls in the United States that have closed and others are still closing up. Now, could you imagine thousands of malls huh? or more than 20,000 of stores? Stores you see stand alone or stores that are in the mall. Okay. Now, in the Philippines, the mall that you see are Schumer, Robinson, Gaisano, you know, and the one owned by Villar, and a few other you know, uh, that are smaller. Today in the United States, there are more than 50 million Americans out of job. Now take note of that. Many of us Filipinos like to go there hoping for a better future. Now if you go to the United States, that will be really wrong because they have no job. Now, in fact, a lot of people uh, are actually ejected or asked to move out of their house. Okay. So where are they staying now? They're staying in empty property. So they buy this tent, which they go to the sporting goods to buy, and they actually live along the empty property. In some of the places, the government provide itong movable na toilet, no? So that's how bad America has become. In fact, if you uh, would watch in the YouTube or in the Facebook, you will find that people nagre riot, di ba? And uh, they are robbing the department store, supermarket. So it's America is Magulo na ngayon, chaotic. What about Philippines? Awa ng Diyos, it's not happening to us. No? But how are we doing? Are we doing any better? Uh, I don't know, really. Uh, what I know is that a lot of people are out of job. The government reports that we have less than 10% out of job. I, I don't know how that is computed. no. Um, because you can always change the way you compute, and then the figure will be more, or the figure will be less. Uh, but I'll tell you something, that since the pandemic, about one and a half, two months ago, uh, the number of applicants in our store increased more than 10 times, meaning more than 1,000%. So there, and then I happened to interview two people simply because they're applying for a job in HR, Human Resource Department. I talked to them. Both of these ladies were looking for a job for more than five months and they could not find one. Yet these two ladies are quite competent. No? And they have uh, a number of years uh, of experience. So so that's that's bad news now. So ang gut feel ko, educated guess, if I should say, there are probably easily eight to 10 million people or maybe even more who are out of job or unemployed. That's not really a good news no? now. Uh, what is the evidence of this? Okay, the evidence, very obvious. All the departments or, or, or most of the department store in the Philippines, department store, uh, not the typical tenant that you find in the mall. The big one is called department store. There are many departments. 
sales have dropped from 50 up to 90 percent so almost all department store i have not heard that there is a single one that's making money in fact all are losing money even if you reduce the number of employees by 50 percent we will still lose money why kailangan pang bayad ng sweldo di ba yung kurente di ba what about the item that we cannot sell di ba you like to buy when there is a sale every time na may sale if we continue to do that we will actually lose money you love it but we don't like it <laughs> di ba di ba so that, that's really uh, really bad news what about the number of people getting sick sa, sa america it used to be the champion di ba uh, meaning there are a lot of people dying in America, a lot of people infected. Kasi sa U.S., uh, yung number of infected, number of deaths due to coronavirus, and then number of recovery, mas accurate kaysa sa atin. Okay, yung figure natin, uh, hindi masyadong accurate. No? Uh, if you ask me, I'm not comfortable with the report given by DOH. Kasi kung hindi ka nagpa-test, and then they come identify as infected. Kung nagkuha ka ng test, pero you do not report it, then the DOH will not know. Right? What about those people who died of COVID? How would they know unless you are tested first? And then when you die, it is reported. So the number of death reported due to, uh, number of death due to COVID, the figure is actually wrong. Okay? Kasi mabasa lang yun. Kung uh, tested, reported, and then report kung namatay ka kasi may COVID ka. Uh, but to say, no, uh, I have many friends or friends of friends, relative of my friends who actually died of COVID, which is kind of scary. No? Uh, now, uh, ito ang background. So ano nangyari? Ang daming business talaga natumba. Hindi na masalvage yun. Hindi may help yun. Uh, the few that actually can survive are what? Drugstore. Few of the hardware. Bakit? Eh, kasi ang lalaki ngayon, mas marami na time sa bahay. So, yung mga bagay na dapat ayusin natin, ngayon, we have not time to fix it. Right? So, mas mabenta ang ilaw. No? Ano pa? Uh, a lot of people went into planting. So, now the, uh, yung planter box, no? Uh, are now selling more. How much more? Oh, you'd be surprised. Uh, maybe 10 to 20 times more. Okay. So they sell a whole lot. But many other items does not. Drugstore, yes, because people now like to take uh, vitamin or supplements. Why? They think that that will improve our immune system so that maybe we can fight the disease better. Is that true? Well, in a way, partly true. Okay. Alam mo naman itong sakit na kung na-affected ka, Pwede naman na carrier ka. Carrier meaning you carry it, hindi nagbunga sa katawan natin, so buhay pa tayo. But we can transfer it to someone and then they get infected. Pag mababang immune system nila, then magbigay yun. So what happened? Then they will show a sense of sick, being sick, and they actually die. So that's bad, no? And ang problema kasi ngayon, ang daming carrier. So I don't know if you're aware that Philippines today is a champion in Southeast Asia. Champion na maraming na infected the number of cases. Ngayon, we're all staying here in Davao. Davao is now the champion in the entire Mindanao. Maraming na infected. At first, it was only SPMC. Malalaki na itong hospital. Ha? Only SPMC handled COVID cases. And then later on, there's a small hotel behind SPMC na kinonvert into the hospital. And then later on, it was Holy Cross Hospital. No? What about now? I think the government uh, mandated that all hospitals must accept COVID patients. What can they do? Actually, nothing. Kasi walang vaccine, saka walang treatment. So, ang na-hope lang, kung nasa hospital ka, baka hindi mo ma-infect yung iba. In effect, quarantine, pero magbayad ka pa din. Di ba? Tapos, what do they do? Well, when you reach that stage, when mahirapan ka na maghinga, then they will incubate you. No? So, kawawa naman din tao. Pag hindi naman, mamatay naman. But it's very hard. How do I know? I have relatives who were infected. Sa awa ng just they survived. So, thank God that they survived. 
Now, the main topic that you actually want me to talk about. So how are the business uh, adjusting to this? Your uh, request was to talk about specifically supermarket. Obviously, the reason why you asked me is because supermarket is the retailer that survives. Actually, in the supermarket, no? uh, drugstore, no? and then uh, some item in hardware. Now, supermarket, alam mo ito nangyari sa atin. Nobody expect. And so, suddenly, the customer behavior change. The things they want to buy, they no longer want. The things that they need, they are now choosing. Okay. The difference between need and want is that need is you cannot live without. Want is I want but I can I can live without. Diba? So, paano naman yung need? Eh, need no, is under the category of food. Uh, detergent, like alcohol. Ang lakas ang benta ng zone rocks. No? Uh, actually, there are other disinfectants. No? Uh, people uh, are familiar with zone rocks. So, zone, zone rocks make a whole lot of money because we choose the brand. Actually, there are many disinfectants. You don't need the zone rocks. No? Um, so, what about food? People are choosing the food that are mas mura. Since wala naman trabaho, the, we would choose the food na mas mura kasi limitado din ang kwarta natin, di ba? So we have to find out what are they. No? At first, yung sardinas, no, malakas ang benta. Uh, pero medyo humina na, alam mo bakit? <laughs> kasi the government always buys sardines and use that as a giveaway. So since everybody is, uh, a lot of people are eating sardines, nasawa na sila, no? So, <laughs> They got so tired of it, the sales of sardines actually went down. Uh, but there are many items that uh, uh, people find the need now in basic, you know, asoka, rice, you know, uh, and then, believe it or not, something that people don't need but they actually buy. What? Junk food. You <laughs> know, junk food? Actually, it that uh, when you go on a, what on a service resort, riba, or when you have nothing else to do or watch a TV, uh, junk food sells more. Why? Because people spend more time at home. Okay. Well, I'm happy they buy more, but actually, uh, junk food is not a healthy food. Do you know that? Junk food is oftentimes salty or I don't know, but amazed. And then, ang color stuff, maganda. Coloring stuff. Masarap ang taste. I call that engineered taste. They create a taste na bagay for us Filipino and we love to eat it. Actually, it's not good for our health. Now, imagine if I continue mabagsak ang benta namin sa grocery. <laughs> so, now people are spending more time at home and uh, and then, so lifestyle have changed. People are going out less often. They will not go out as much as before. So what happened? People, uh, when they go to grocery because they need to, they go less frequent, but they buy more. Okay? So instead of going two times a week, they go once a week. So they buy less frequently, but they buy more. Now, kami naman sa retailer or sa supermarket, dapat mag adjust kami. How? Oh, we should review that every week to find out how the customer is changing. The things they like and then they don't like anymore. No? And then the thing they used to like and they no longer buy as much. So we have to know and determine uh, what are they buying and what they are not buying. Now, very easy for me to tell you that. I'll tell you that in 30 seconds. You know, we have between 15 to 20,000 SKU. We love to find out what they are. So how do we do that? Uh, we categorize all our item into different, you know, like sardines, junk food, may iba ibang klase ng junk food, drinks, meron ng soft drinks, juice, or just plain water. Tatlong category, you know. Example, shampoo, you know? or shampoo is just one word, you know? pero alam mo shampoo, meron yung may conditioner, walang conditioner, meron anti-dandruff, you know? tapos may malalaking size, 250, 150, 125, you know? 80 ml, no, or 50, 45, 15, 12 ml. No, so iba iba yun. Uh, are you aware that all, it's only in Philippines that we are selling sachet? 
Yes, we are selling sachet, the only country in the world that sells sachet. Pero, think about it. Do you know that sachet is the most expensive shampoo? So, for the rest of you who is listening, uh, if one thing you learn from me today is buy bigger bottle because you save more money. Sachet, napakaliit, binayaran mo yung supot. Okay, so they charge you more for so little. No? So, sachet, actually, sachet is the most sellable. Uh, and sachet is the most preferred sa Sari Sari store. Yet, that is actually the most expensive. No? Most expensive on per ml, if you compute that on that basis. So, how did we cope under this so-called new normal? Now, itong bago, magiging permanent na ba? Na kung magiging permanent, di we call it new normal. Dati, hindi itong normal, abnormal. Ngayon, itong abnormal, kung palaging ganun, di itawag natin new normal. Pangit naman, tawagin mo abnormal. Di ba? Mas may dating pag sabi mo new normal, di ba? So, it's now a new normal. What happened if the COVID will disappear? Will it disappear? Are we going to find uh, uh, the vaccine? No? And uh, are we going to find a treatment? You know, a vaccine? Uh, a vaccine is introducing very little of that disease into our body so that our body will develop its defense mechanism or called antibodies. So that's what vaccine means. It developed the antibodies in our body, so our now our body will now be resistant to the vaccine, eh, to the disease, coronavirus. But they are saying coronavirus keep on changing, or they, the term they use is nag-mutate, nag-iiba. No? So kung nag-iiba, di, na kailangan mag-iiba na din ang vaccine. So the pharmaceutical will be the happiest company in the world because they will continue to develop that new vaccine, uh, and who knows, charges a, a lot of money, and then we will need it again and again and again because it does not last. Okay? So I hope they're telling the truth. Okay, The happiest company in the world today are the pharmaceutical. Uh, by the way, do you know that there are many pharmaceuticals that are uh, about to develop a vaccine or some said they already have and they are trying it out? Uh, uh, normally, ang vaccine should be tried out, no? Probably over a, a year. E paano naman kung over a year? Marami ng business matumba. Ang dami na nga natumba ngayon. Mga ano lang yun, March na up to now, no? It's about nine months. Ang dami na natumba. If you're going to wait until it is normally approved by a uh, food drug authority of different countries, so many business will be destroyed. Many people will die. No, people will be unemployed uh, and criminality will go up. The government can no longer handle it. Makagulo na itong mundo, the entire world. Nakita mo naman sa US, di ba? Ang dami na nag-riot, nag na talaga. Okay. Yun din isang dahilan, natalo si Trump. No? One of the things that people blame Trump is coronavirus, that he is unable to manage it properly. Okay. Um, so, are we going to have a vaccine? Yeah. Are we going to wait for a year of testing? I don't believe so. So they'll just use it. What if it doesn't work? Well, that's the risk. Now, there are many companies. You know, Pfizer is not the only one. Marami. In fact, China has their treatment. I, want, I don't know if they have vaccine. Um, you know that in Wuhan, when they had it, uh, they tried different Chinese drugs that are actually existing. And there are drugs that actually was able to treat it. All the coronavirus, that one I don't know. But it was able to treat some. Okay. And that's uh, going around Southeast Asia. Of course, the American uh, uh, will not support it, especially their pharmaceutical. Why? Because... Kung makita na, nag-work, paano naman yung pharmaceutical? Hindi na sila yayaman. Di ba? So they're doing everything under the, uh, doing everything to destroy itong drugs that actually work in a number of cases. No? 
So the American are against it now, of course. That will affect their pharmaceutical. Okay. So what's a new normal? Well, if let us say we have a vaccine and a treatment, when are we going to have it? Uh, when it is going to be launched, the first quarter of next year, when will Philippines get it? So, hula ko, estimate ko. Probably six months after. Maybe it will be the third quarter or fourth quarter of next year. Will all of us Filipino get it? No, of course not. Limitado yun. No? So, when will it reach to, let's say, two-thirds of all the Filipinos in the Philippines? No? My guess is that probably 2022. Who knows by then we have a new president. No? So, will the government pay attention to us? I don't know. Uh, they're more interested in winning the next election. So, so, so what, what will happen to business? Well, kung wala yun, then we'll still have the problem. Diba? Now, if this uh, vaccine and treatment uh, will come to the Philippines in small volume, who do you think uh, will be the first to get it. Obviously, yung may kaya. Why? Because a pharmaceutical will charge a very, very high price. Who else? Well, I think most of our politicians uh, will benefit. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, some of, many of our poor will probably be infected and died of coronavirus. Okay. So, if that happened, what then? Now, take, for, uh, take note, ha? ang DE market, ba? social economic class A, B, C, D, E. Okay. The DE market is very large in population. In fact, C, D, E is probably about more than 80% of the entire population. And uh, social economic class D, E will be mostly affected. So, will the death increases? Yes, I believe so. Will the business be affected? Absolutely. Because this is majority of the people. If they cannot buy, they have no money to buy, what then? Mugulo. Criminality will actually increase. Sales will drop. People will buy more of what is essential. Meaning if this is the range of essential, they will buy even fewer of those essential particularly for the DE market. So, question is, how do we businessmen in supermarket respond to that? Well, uh, hindi natin pwede ma-generalize ito. So, depende kung nasaan ang tindahan natin. Kung, kung in this particular place, then our merchandising will be a bit different. If they are in certain place, it will be different. So, that is medyo mabigat para sa amin because we have to continually adjust. There are many items that used to sell well, that will no longer sell. So just because we sold it six months ago does not mean we will sell it the next three months. What is sold six months ago, maybe the last three months, hindi, mahina na. Maybe in the next three months, mag-iiba. So we must continually fine-tune, adjust, study. Can all do that? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Why? And most of the supermarket manager uh, who manage merchandise are not used to that. Usually, you review merchandising, meaning merchandise mix, uh, uh, probably once a year. Very frequently, yun, if you review them, uh, once every six months. Now, take nota, huh? we're talking here of 15 to up to 20 or 25,000 items. Napakadami yun. Huh? So, napakadami yun. So, item that we don't. That does not sell and we continue to maintain. Baka mag-BO. BO simply means ma-expire. Kung pagkain yun, baka masira, ang, baka masira na yun. Okay? Okay lang kung ang di mas, masyadong masarap ang taste, hindi na optimum, pero terrible yun kung nasisira talaga. Kasi na-expire. So that is the biggest problem that every supermarket will have in the Philippines today. In fact, anywhere in the world, no? The problem will be the same. Now, nakikita doon sa America, bakit madali na run out? Uh, baka you don't pay attention to that. Most people don't. But uh, I spend uh, 20, 30 hours a week 
on weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and very often one, two hours in the evening, Monday to Friday. What do I do? I look at what's happening in the economy in U.S., in China, Southeast Asia, and Philippines. I try also to look at what's happening in the supermarket industry and retail industry. And then I find out what they are doing. So iba bang bansa, baka ang problema medyo may pagka-unit. Sa Amerika kasi, they operate with very low inventory, yung supermarket nila. And usually, supermarket is dominated by very few but very large. Meaning, very few that has 500, 1,000 branches all over America. And they operate with very small inventory. So kung may problema sa delivery or you call distribution or logistics, immediately mararun out. So yun ang problema. In Philippines, we are not as good in logistics, although nag improve na over the last 20 years. You know that 30 years ago, there is no such course as logistic management? But now there is. Okay. What is logistics? Because this logistics simply means from the time you finish production and you are going to ship it out all the way to the time you bring it to the store. So kung, let us uh, take Manila, for example. You produce it somewhere in central Luzon. Then after they produce, they have to fill up a whole container. They bring it to the seaport. Let's say they're going to bring it to Mindanao. They bring it to the seaport. Eh, Matraffic yun. Dapat mapuno naman yung container. Pag hindi, malulugi sila. And then they'll have to wait, magpipila, before they bring it to the boat. And then they will bring it all the way across Bisaya and then all the way to iikotin pa ang Mindanao. And then papasok doon sa Davao Bay. Then they get to the seaport. And then it will be transferred down, and then another truck will bring it all the way to the different supermarket. No, to the supermarket or they'll bring it to their distribution point. Simply means their warehouse. And then they will unload. And then after they unload, then the distributor or the principal will load it again. Binabibase nila sa kung anong in-order ng mga supermarket, then they bring it. All of that until they bring it to our supermarket. That's called logistic now there is a such a course 30 years ago there was no such course in in the philippines okay so we in supermarket must also consider that although uh, many na very small one don't care no kasi siyempre pag order bigyan man ng order bahala na sila kung kailan nila i-deliver e kung nararun out pa ano yun ang, ang nagiging problema and then will there be run out actually Nag-run out. March, April, May, June. Hanggang, ano, hanggang I think, July, nag-run out. Bakit? Eh, kasi, uh, a lot of people are afraid to get infected. So what happened? Gikat nila ang production nila. Bakit? Kasi yung mga tao hindi makapasok sa trabaho. So they cannot produce it. And then, ang daming mga problema just bringing from the factory all the way to the seaport in Manila. So, alam mo, may pila na 6-8 hours na dapat lang 1 to 2 hours. So what happened? Maraming run out nakikita mo in the supermarket all around Mindanao and Visaya. E nag improve na ngayon. What was the solution? They increased their buffer inventory. Meaning reserva ba? So, na, now, right now, di ba may bagyo sa Manila, sa Solusyon? Nagpa-flood in some area. Uh, will there be shortage? I don't know. Yes, if the factory are located in areas where there is a flood. Now, even kung walang flood, but if they have to pass by those areas na may flood, then they will have a problem bringing it all the way from the factory all the way to the shipping port. So all of that will impact. Now, the question again is, so what do we, businessmen in supermarket, do? Well, we must know where they are. Are they affected? No. Uh, so, paano ngayon? Eh, biglaan ito. Eh. Nobody can actually plan for it. So, for some of us who carry higher inventory, then we are lucky. Okay, we are lucky. Kung maran natin bas, kami hindi magran natin, ang benta natin maglakas. Kung maran natin ko, yung iba hindi, di ang benta ko marijos. And I have no stock to sell. So, our customer will transfer to the other store. Okay. Okay. That is not the main problem. The main problem is, with this COVID going on, and there is still no uh, vaccine and cure, the new normal is that uh, 
people are buying differently. They are choosing their item. How should I merchandise? How much inventory should I carry? Okay. What are the safety measures that we are adopting? Can I work with less people? Okay. Can I improve our efficiency? Efficiency, productivity, inventory management, merchandising management. All of this must be considered. If I only continue to do what we are doing, we'll have a problem. But if we adjust to this so-called the new normal, then we will survive and others will not. Or they will make less money or they might actually even end up losing money. Okay, now next point. What happened if my vaccine now? What happened if there is treatment? Will people come back? Yes. 100% no. You know why? Because many of us are so used to buying online. Some people who end up doing well, meaning generating income through online, they don't like to work in the store anymore. Mago online na lang. Bakit? Because they can wake up late, they can wake up early, they can choose their time as long as they find the product and they sell it and it will be delivered. No? So they just, uh, uh, your customer will just go to your house, pick up the item and it will be delivered uh, to the residence of the customer or to wherever they want. So some of this will change. Which particular market segment will be affected by this? Mostly. The 35 years old and below, which I believe is my entire audience now. In the school are usually 17 up to 25 now. So most of you uh, who are younger uh, will adapt to this change uh, faster than the older ones. The older ones, they're probably 50 and above, probably will select to go to a store, you know, look at the item, and then buy. Maybe we will buy less frequently, but we will buy more. Now, we will go to online only on certain items. The problem kasi with the online is you see the picture, but is that what you want? You cannot touch it. You cannot smell it. You cannot hold it and weigh it. So, hindi mo matimbang. Di ba? So, pag you will buy only what you see, and only one senses is involved. Mata. So, hindi mo mahawak, hindi mo maamoy. No, so, uh, sometimes you will end up buying things that are not worth its price. No, uh, I don't know. Maybe for the younger ones, you'll be so used to it, uh, used to buying wrong item, and you'll be more forgiving than some of us who are older. Okay? We will feel na parang we are cheated pag ganito. The younger one, para kung masanay ka na, okay lang, parang uh, getting cheated is normal. Maybe that's also a new normal. Okay. What are the other new normal? The other new normal is that uh, people who cannot go to restaurants, in most of the restaurants are, half of the restaurants are almost dead. Do you know that Jollibee closed almost 400 stores? Jollibee is the king of fast food. It closed more than almost 400 stores. Okay, that's how bad it is. Now, could you imagine other fast food? Oh, many of them are closed. They're not surviving. But anyway, so how are we, the customer, adjusting to this? Well, for those who have money and they like to buy, we call. So some restaurants are still selling. How? By delivery. They usually don't deliver. Uh, the delivery, third-party delivery, will go to the restaurant, get it, pick it up, and deliver it to your home. So that will become part of the new normal, even after we'll have a vaccine and the treatment. So part of our habit will change. In fact, there are some people who have not gone to office for since uh, March. You know? Well, I, I, I come to office, but uh, there was a two, more than two months, a little over two months, I did not go to office. Medyo mahirap, ano? So, kamalakas ang benta ng ano, yung data plan ng uh, Globe no? at saka Smart. Yeah. Oh, that's the other business pala that does well. Oh, the other business that did well pala, no, computer. So, people are using more computer. 
the notebook computer especially. Why? Because uh, the student went into online, online education. So, bigla na lumakas ang benta ng, ng uh, uh, notebook computer. So, what happened? That will also become a new normal. Could you imagine ng mga bata, 6, 7 years old hanggang college level, are now forced into using computer, especially the kids. Uh, my granddaughter is uh, 9 years old, is using that. Uh, my other granddaughter is only 3, no? So, my daughter always have to monitor her. So, she's learning through the notebook computer. What will happen? This uh, probably will affect the rest of their life. Communicating, watching uh, movie, Netflix, communicating with two, three people all at the same time, studying in the computer. They'll always be in the computer. This will become, this will accelerate a new lifestyle. This will also be a new normal. So this new lifestyle will affect us businessmen in the way we operate our business. I still find it hard to allow my people to work at home, especially those in the office. But uh, some company are have started to do that. So this is a new normal, which was once abnormal, and this will affect the rest of our life. I myself, at my age, I spend 20, 30 hours a week, every week, on computer, reading, studying, watching YouTube, communicating with my friends, uh, Canada, Singapore, United States, no? and other places. So uh, it is very convenient, does not cost much unless uh, uh, because I have it, uh, a Wi-Fi at home, I just pay for the, uh, for the line. So this will affect all of us. Uh, for our children, uh, particularly kayo, uh, and your children particularly, the world will be different. It's called a digital world. And uh, it still continue to change. Another thing that will continue to change uh, will be artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence, I do not believe it will ever replace human being. I mean, not all. It can replace human being in certain things. Like what? Engineering, because it's exact science, Artificial intelligence can do part of that. A doctor can be partly replaced by artificial intelligence. In fact, the artificial intelligence will be sometimes more effective than doctor. There is a study I have read that uh, they input uh, the X-ray and the uh, the judgment or diagnosis. Judgment is called diagnosis huh, in medicine into the computer and the artificial intelligence establish a correlation. So if there are more data, the more accurate it is. In fact, after some volume of data, the computer is even more accurate than a doctor in evaluating extreme. What about evaluating disease also? Uh, well, I don't know if this is relevant to you, but this is relevant in how people think. You know, if you're a doctor and you want to evaluate somebody, whether he, anong klase ng sakit, titingnan mo, sana sakit mo. Sabi no, sa tiyan ko, so turuan mo sa doctor, tiyan. If the doctor did not touch you, no physical exam, then he said, more likely, ang sakit yun is maybe five potential diseases. Pag i-touch ka, tapos di physical exam, whether na-touch, masakit, o itulak niya, masakit, and then ma-identify anong lugar, maybe yung five potential disease, baka magiging three na lang. But when he does a test on the blood, then maybe the potential three maybe will only become two. No? So for the lab test and physical exam, plus what you say and how you feel, will now identify specifically what that sickness is. No? And then all he has to do is to remember what are the treatments that has already been in use, tried and tested, so-called the drug of choice. Then if you remember that, you got it. Now, if you think about it, artificial intelligence can do that. So many of the doctors can be replaced in time by artificial intelligence. So with engineering, particular design for electrical, no, 
uh, for architecture, uh, structural engineering, you know, and many other things can be replaced partly by artificial intelligence. Uh, funny as it may sound, you can also have uh, artificial intelligence to replace girlfriend. I'm just kidding. Actually, it can sound like the, the voice that you like, you know, and it can talk to you. And this girl will be the most intelligent being there is in the world. Why? Because now you can use Siri or you can use Google Assistant. It can access the internet and it can answer you almost any questions you want to ask. Obviously, in the internet, you can search for anything. So it will provide you company with that real person. And it will always adjust to you. You can never be angry at the artificial intelligence. And you can even choose the face of the woman that you like. Crazy at it may sound. Actually, it cannot. It can be done now. Well, I use Philippines. Huh? Imagine if I can do that. I can replace part of our merchandising. That will be awesome. You know what artificial intelligence have done? In many countries in the world, artificial intelligence with robot robotics have now replaced manufacturing for cars. All of this will affect the way we do things. That is a new normal, more than just the pandemic. In fact, the pandemic today will push us even further into, into the use of artificial intelligence. It will affect the way we will live. It will change our lifestyle. It will even change the way we communicate. Unless we really have to see each other, people will probably find it more convenient than to go through all the traffic and I can talk to you and see you at any time, on demand. Isn't that beautiful? But of course, uh, if you are young, you want to see your girlfriend. But other than that, you can talk to, uh, communicate, and do a lot of things. So, itong nangyari ngayon will push us very quickly into the future. And the world will change. No? I'm with the church now. We are meeting, uh, board meeting, a council of elders meeting, a meeting with different groups in a different organization that I'm part of, all through Zoom or Google Meet or other uh, platform. So itong COVID is pushing us further into this, much faster. What business will do well? Logistics, communication, online business. No, and what is most essential. So I will end here, and uh, anyone can ask me any question. You are free to ask, but I will not answer all the questions. <laughs> but uh, I will try to answer all the questions. Thank you, sir. So thank you very much, sir. That was indeed a very great discussion, Sir John. Thank you for educating us and sharing with us your knowledge and expertise. So I believe that most of our viewers have learned a lot in our discussion for today. So now for the second part of our program, we will be having an open forum to answer some questions from our viewers. For our first time viewers, if you have any questions, you can send us your questions by typing in the comment section down below. And our representatives will gladly collect and select the questions for you. And so we have our first question coming from the Dean of the College of Business Education, Dr. Melcher Bombeo, sir. Uh, good morning, Sir John. My apologies, I got cut off in my introduction. No? Uh, it's beyond our control because of some problem with the internet provider. Uh, Sir John, we appreciate your candidness. When you talk of your views as to products that consumers should buy, even to the extent that it may affect or have an effect on your store inventories. Now, my question would be, okay, what message would you give to micro and small entrepreneurs who supply so considering the temperament or behavior of consumers are changing frequently? Oh, okay, it's uh, micro and small enterprise, uh, particularly, let's just say, let's be more specific. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you know that the sorry store business actually in Agobro? Why? Because people don't like to shop as often as before. If they come to our supermarket, they come less frequently and they buy more. But there are others also 
kuwal ba yung ultimate na pinaka-essential? Kampo, uh, sardinas, tubig, no? or canvas? They buy one or two pieces. So they go to the nearest Sari Sari store. So the Sari Sari store business in the Philippines actually is growing. Okay. So what is critical is that if you happen to have a Sari Sari, well, anyone can open a Sari Sari store. No? In your house, you put a small hole in the sand lugar and then make sure lang ma safe you, no? And people can see what you buy. And you have your Sari Sari store. And you probably need about three to 5,000 pesos to start it. Diba? So people will buy the most essential. But you have to find out yung lugar, ano bang gusto nila. Okay? But Sari Sari store is actually uh, a growing business. In fact, our, our sales of the Sari Sari store customer have grown. You just have to make sure it's convenient for them and you have the items na walang run out so that they want to get and get away right away. They don't want to stay too long. So then you'll have to ask what the customer wants. If there's something they look for that you don't have, you write it down. Simple research lang yun. You write it down. And you encourage them to tell you. So they'll help you. Imagine they'll tell you what they want. Uh, that's better than uh, market research. You don't need a, a master degree to learn that. You just ask what they want. Imark mo isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. Diba? Ilan na naghahanap yun. Diba? And you ask everybody... Every time somebody comes and buy from you, and then later you add on to it, so you can grow your business. And sorry, sorry, store margin is good, then. If you mark up three five percent, your markup is ten to twenty percent. Your margin is far better than ours. Oh, go ahead. Any? Okay. Thank you so much for the for the enlightened replies, uh, Sir John. I'm sure the those who are having their small sari sari store will have a motivation to do their best mm -hmm. more so with your practical suggestion that they do not have to earn a master's degree for a market research <laughs> thank you so much okay so for our second question we have from sir alexis baligod sir Yeah, unmute. Sir Alex, please unmute your mic. Uh, hello, Sir Jan. Good morning. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for that encouraging okay. remark for the Sari Sari stores. No? Sir Jan, uh, this is my question. Uh, when the pandemic started, uh, what measures did you use, uh, what measures did you implement in order to weather out this pandemic? And we have a timeline on this. Uh, maybe, in, in short, you're saying, how did I respond to it? You know, at first, not just yeah. like anybody, we were caught flat-footed. Uh, so one of the things I did is actually, uh, I spent a lot of time trying to discussing with our people uh, what we can do. So I asked myself, so ano problema? Number one, nag-drop ang benta. Ano ba ang malakas ang benta? Ano gagawin ko kung mahina ang benta? Can I do something so that I can still sell it? Can I sell it? Kung pwede na at the loss. Maski halos na at cost. No? And then the other thing I did is I I went to the net, since you have access to anything, to find out what other countries are doing. And a lot of people are writing. No? Uh, mga expert, a consultant who want to show how good they are so that you'll hire them. But it's American and all over the world. No? So, and then I read them. I read uh, also uh, uh, people like uh, Ben Jokna of Central Bank, Sunny Dubuinges, coincidentally uh, a good friend uh, over the years. And many of the people of the Duterte government, most of them. And then uh, you read, no? Their major university, uh, who's economist uh, and uh, business professor talks about things. You know? So you read them. So you find out. And I talk to my supplier and ask them what they're doing. No suggestion in them. Do I do what they want? Of course not. I listen to them. I process it. I discuss with our people. Then we decide what we can do. And so when we are doing that, we are continually adjusting 
and adjust them. Now, if you think three hours, you, let's say you are, uh, your IQ is far higher than me. It takes you two hours to do it and take me eight hours. I will give 10 hours, so now I'll be better than you. Diba? So I'll study it and I'll think better. If I know more, I have more info I can process. If I know how other people think, then I'm better. I am technically speaking more intelligent because I learned the how from others. So ito, the idea of wanting to continue to learn and use it, wag lang tayo mayabang, dapat humble, and we discuss with people and we continue to do that. Not once in a blue moon, not once a week, not on weekend, no, every day. Then we will do better. And others who just wait for things to happen because they think they have lots of money or they think their business is big, mali yun. Or they're big or small, pareho ko naman din eh. Kung nag adjust tayo, then you do better. Alam mo parang misal, I always explain to my people this way. You know, ang misal ba, 50 years ago, when you shoot a misal, there is a specific target. Once you shoot it, and if the target move, then you cannot hit the target, right? Kasi gumala na yung target eh. E di yun ang nat ngayon, ang misal, yung that, that, at the tip of the missile, my computer. No? Pag i-lock in mo, it will always follow the target even if the target is moving. You know that? If you're in a plane and you shoot another plane, and pag na-lock in na, nakita natin sa movie, di ba? Pag na-lock in na, pag you shoot the, the small missile, small, huh? very small, to hit another plane, they will follow the plane. Right? Because there is a brain inside the computer which is a radar and a sort of artificial intelligence. And we just follow. That is how we should decide. Continually learning and changing and listening. Then, the chance of survival increases many times. It's not something that you do once a month, uh, once a week, and day. You continually learn and find out and adjust. And do you know how our brains work? The more you think, the better you become. The more you think, the faster you will think. The more you learn, the more tools you will have. You know, I tell, uh, I used to teach some graduate school in business in UP. I tell them, you know that if I teach you something and you learn it and you know it, but you forget it, I said, you do, you do not have it. If you remember once that you understand, but now you don't, you don't have it. You never, you must know. Understand, remember, practice and until you achieve mastery and that it is in your head. And when you meet a problem, you can recall at will. And you know it right away. You recognize that there is such a tool that you can use. Then that is your knowledge. If you don't have it, you don't get it. Uh, sorry, I, I, I cannot see all of you, no? but uh, all of you are in college, I'm sure. Imagine. You learn a lot from your school. Uh, and then I'll give you a test right now. How much do you think you remember? I bet you cannot even remember 5%. So you know what happened? You just wasted your life and your money. If you cannot remember what you learn and you do not, huh, you don't know how to use it and you cannot recall it at will when you meet a problem and you cannot remember that there is such a tool. You know what? You just wasted your life. Sorry, I'm very straightforward with you. But unless you have it, you don't have it. You never actually own it. And you never learn it. Your diploma is nothing. So what is important is that you have it, you understand, and you can recall right away, at will. In fact, hindi nga at will eh. Kung may problema, makita mo agad sa utak mo. Ayun pala, pwede gamitin ko yun. Pwede, I can use that potential approach to resolve this problem. Then that knowledge is truly yours. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Sir John. Thank you for your question, Sir Alex. And so we now proceed to questions from our audience. First, we have Algen Mangaron, and he asks, Good morning, po, Sir. In this time of pandemic, how would retailers selling non-essential products manage their business, especially those items that are not easily sold? So what are you going to do with them? First, you must pay that you have not paid your supplier. <laughs> if you have not paid, then you ask them to take him back. What happens if you paid? If you have a good relationship, maybe they'll give you a discount. 
What happened? You cannot do. You cannot return. You cannot get the discount. What would you do? What do you think you should do? You should sell it as fast as you can. Non-essential. Eh? Non-essential na basic or kasi basic pa din na non-essential. No? So, so what happened na, na may fashion yun? Meaning, after some time, laos na yun. Oh, you sell it, the faster the better. No? You want to prevent loss. No? Now, if you can prevent it, but you can prevent bigger loss. The later you wait, the bigger loss you will have. Kasi mas laos na yun, pangit na yun. Di ba? So, what, you sh what should you do? The faster you act, the better. Try to lose as little as you can. Maybe buy one, the next one 50% off. That is like saying 25% discount for both. Okay? Buy two, one free. That's like giving 33% off. Right? pag mo yun. Pero, we people like free, right? The word free. There is a study on that. People like the word free. 33% is not as appealing as buy two, one free. You know, buy two, one free is 33%. Diba? So, the key is to sell it and dispose it as fast as you can. The earlier, the less you lose. The later, the more you lose. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And we have our next question from Charlene Abelia. Sir, good morning. What retail sector po ba yung resilient po in every situation that can still be profitable even during crisis aside from the food industry? Alam mo, sabi mo, every situation. Well, generally speaking, it's food. Diba? Ano? Sabon. Diba? Nagliligo naman tayo araw-araw, diba? <laughs> yung mga simple, too big. Diba? So you should own uh, Davao City Water District. Unfortunately, you cannot. You know that one of the most profitable drinks is not juice and coke. It is water. How do you know what they do with that water? But you're paying for it. You know how much you're paying for that water? So that's one of those profitable ones. Yung mga fashion item, hindi profitable. Of course, medicine. No matter what, people get sick. Diba? Or you can get a, a drugstore, generic. Kaibigan ko yung may ari, Ben Luzon. Generic is doing well. Kaya, alam mo naman Pinoy, we uh, like to copy. Kaya may generic ka. Actually, kinopya na yun. Diba? Ilagay mo ng ka. Generic, generic ka. Diba? So, there are many uh, this, these are the basic food. Uh, uh, what is essential? Uh, yung essential is sabon, di ba? Uh, kung walang pandemic, kung may pandemic, then uh, disinfectant. Like Sonrox are doing so well. Lysol, naran out ng Lysol palagi. No? Hindi nila na anticipate ganun kalakas ang benta. Di ba? Uh, medicine, no? but more particularly, are the supplements the vitamins. So, during difficult, uh, you, you cannot generalize all, no? Kasi depende, ano ba ang sitwasyon? No? But in all situations, we always need food. But certain situation, that certain things sells more, no? Uh, more than normal. So, that actually depends. Any more questions? Yes, sir. We have more questions coming from our viewers. And this time, this is from Ricardo Garcia. Sir John, good morning. What are the safety nets or monitoring procedures imposed by the government or the Philippine Chamber of Commerce to protect the interest of employees as far are, as their salaries are concerned, considering that the employee job ratio, where a large number of applicants are vying for few positions, meaning the employer will take advantage of this situation that a salar salary lower than the minimum standard will be given to the employee just to have the position? Uh, actually, uh, baka you're not aware, no? Uh, the question, uh, uh, obviously, the person is not aware. You know that the uh, Department of Labor are more concerned about people not having job than people getting minimum? So what happened now is that if the employer and the employee will agree on a certain amount of salary, even with below minimum, the government will actually allow it. 
So I ask myself, is this correct? If you ask me, that's why I'm not John Gaisano, I'm not a businessman, and I'm working in the government. Uh, I will uh, agree to that. Why? Because having work, having income is more important than minimum wage. I think the question is like this. Okay. Four of them are working. One already lost his job. And then, um, unless uh, I agree for the lower of the minimum, yung apat, ah, yung lima, anak ko yun, ah, yung apat may trabaho, yung isa wala. And the employer talked to me, I'm the father and I'm the president of the union. And the employer said, Oy, Mr. John, papaya ka ba? I-reduce ko yung salary. Pero i-retain ko yung apat ng anak mo. Pero kung ayaw mo, okay, I'll keep the minimum, pero I will remove one of your son. I will now hire only three. What would I do if I'm the father? I would like him to hire all my four children. Why? Paano naman yung the three will work only for the other two? Mahirap yun. One of these time, mag-aaway sila. Tsaka magiging tamad. Maghihintay na lang. For somebody to work for him. I would rather they all work. So your question is how do you protect? To me, protecting the livelihood is more important than protecting the minimum. When you are talking of unemployment, which is actually happening right now. Because I know that America has more than 50 million people unemployed. Even if you reduce the salary by 50%, I wonder how many of them can still work. Very few. Why? The business just closed. I told you, more than 20,000 retailers in the United States not closed. How are they going to work? Most of the mall not closed. They have no place to work in. And you mga businessmen, on the other hand, they cannot even survive. Even after reducing 50, yung about 60, yung about 70 percent. I went to Abrisa, uh, since I do not know me. Uh, uh, and then I just go from one tenant to the other. Talk to a few. And talk to the Tindera inside. So since I don't, they do not know who I am, I talk to them like a customer. And I get a lot of info. So sabi ko, oh, dati na bang marami ng Tindera dito? Oh, sir, dati eight. Ngayon, dalawa na lang kami. So baka na ang benta ngayon. Sir, wala pa. But in the afternoon, and wala pang benta the whole day, sabi ko, lugi yung kumpanya. Alam mo ang reaction nila? Oo oh, nga, sir. Wala pang benta. Grabe, oh. Now, if you are me, what would you do? You have five children. One already lost her job. Four has minimum. And the company wanted to reduce further. So he talked to you, and now you are the union president. And you are also the father of the four, child, of the four children. To me, I want all of them to have work. I hope that answered your question. Diba? Iba na yun, ha? kung maraming trabaho, ha? ibang usapan yun. Eh, ang problema ngayon, eh, wala nga trabaho. Ha? And the businessman cannot, could hardly survive. Eh. So that kind of question always depends on what is the situation. Level of employment and the feasibility of the business and ability to survive. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So to proceed to our next question, this is from Amelia Cassandra. Good morning, Sir John. How can we efficiently address the inventories so we can avoid running out of stock in the stores? <laughs> Ngayon, ang hina ang benta, ang problema ng lahat, mostly ba? Uh, is ma maraming stocks. Uh, of course, may problema. Kung yung factory, may problema, meaning in production, especially those items na mabenta. Then for this particular item, you have to increase your inventory a little higher. How much higher? Actually, you never know because the market keep on changing. Di ba sinabi ko sa inyo? That you must always continually monitor and find out. You're continually adjusting. What is true the last three months may no longer be true next month. So what happened? If you study it well, then it will be like an educated guest. Sabi, ah, oh, maybe I should do this. I-try mo and then i-monitor mo. Kung nakamali, mag-a-adjust ka uli. Kung nasobra, di-adjust mo. Kung kulang, di-adjust mo. How often? Adjusting all the time. And chances are, if you do and others don't, then you win. Then you do better than them. 
Okay, go ahead. Okay, sir. So now we are down to our last two questions, sir. So for the next question, we have from Herika Joyce Magbanwa. As the operations are affected, how do you handle or support your employees during this crisis? Uh, what do you mean by support? In the clarion. Um, okay, sir. So I guess um, we can proceed na lang po to, to our next question. This is from an anonymous user. Good morning po, Mr. Gaysano. What has helped you to get where you are in the forefront and what advice would you have for others who want to set off in a similar direction? Uh, you know what? You can go to the best school in the world. Learn from the best teacher. Know all the tools in making decisions. By the way, making decisions, maraming tools in yun. But you know who is the winner? You know that John Coco has little education. He practically spent a lot of time learning by himself. You know that Henry C. is not a genius. Huh? He ha does not have a PhD. But you know how successful they are? Very extremely successful. Lucio Tan. No? Why are they successful? Because they never give up. They work awfully hard. They are very focused. Huh? They are willing to walk an extra mile. No, they are willing to work 20 miles more than an extra mile. That's why they succeed. They succeed because of focus, character, determination, and hard work. In the end, that is what counts. Many people who are rich all over the world are not geniuses. They are the men with focus and hard work. Kaya problema, yung anak ng mga mayaman, ano yung problema yun eh? Hindi galing sa hirap, no? So sometimes, yung anak ng mayaman, they succeed for one generation. After that, hindi na. So unfortunately, yung grandchildren namin, hindi ko alam, I hope they will succeed. Di ba? Kasi hindi dumaan sa hirap eh. Dapat, you know, I have a friend and I have predicted many times, uh, some of my friends, 30 years, 40 years ago, who will succeed. And you know what? They succeeded. They are very poor. And I am happy to help them. You know, you tell them at 8 o'clock in the evening, they will work at 8 o'clock in the evening. Walang 8 to 5. Walang 8 to 5. Diba? Well, for many of you who are still not working, and one day you might establish your business or you might work in a company. Now, let me tell you this. Huh? If you think you work in a company and it's like an 8 to 5 thing, you know what? You will not succeed as much as those who do not think of an 8 to 5. You know the 8 to 5? Come in at the 8, leave at 5. No? But those who are willing to walk the extra mile, who doesn't count the hours. So if you are the president or the owner of that business and you have 20 people, who do you think you like to promote? Who do you think you will, so dapat trusted yung tao, honest, tsaka masipag. Who do you think you would like to promote? Di ba klaro yun? You will promote someone who is hardworking and honest, who does not count the hours. Because that is exactly what you want, to be the model and example for all the rest of others. But if your employee very open, I hey, bakit ba, work beyond five? Di ba, ba, I was do this. But that kind of attitude is usually not the winner. And then, uh, well, maybe, let me share with you, no? uh, and you may not quite understand this. You know, but most of you are really young, and many of those who are below 35 often have this. Uh, this is uh, something that is very common today, but it was not uh, 30, 40 years ago. Normally, when we were younger, long, long time ago, when we work with a company, and uh, it's stable, we stay with it. Now, people, na kung konting anong, gusto na mag-transfer. Kasi uh, yung boss na, no, racist boss, na, I want to transfer. O yung boyfriend na nag-transfer, gusto na mag-transfer. O mas maganda yung mall doon, no? pupunta naman sa kabila. So, the reason to transfer sometimes has nothing to do with the company you work. They want convenience, they want uh, easier life. You know, these are the things that makes you lose. If you don't mind that, I tell you that. Maybe you may not like me for it, but one day you'll appreciate for those who will succeed. Because those who will succeed are those who are focused, hardworking, and they stick to a job. And they excel. Those who count the hours and they transfer, kunti lang ano, nagagalit na, masyadong sensitive, mag-transfer niya. 
O hindi pwede magamit ang cellphone, you cannot bring your cellphone to work. Eh dapat naman, hindi. Alam mo, mala, uh, a lot of big company, that when there's a meeting, you're not supposed to bring your cellphone, or you're not supposed to bring your cellphone to office, some very big company do not actually allow that. So you think about this. Do you want to be ordinary or do you want to excel? Do you want to become somebody one day? You know, so among the 50 or the 100, you want to be one of the very few who can become somebody. Then that somebody requires discipline, focus, industry, honesty, cooperation, humility. This is what makes the winner. Not the one with the best education, believe me, it's not. Although I value education. Uh, and I've taught once, no? uh, but still, what makes a winner is all of this that I have just described. Okay, so thank you very much <clears throat> for your answers, Sir John. And so before we proceed to the awarding of the certificate, we have some greetings coming from our audience. So for the first greeting, we have from Rasil Laranas. Good morning, Mr. Gaisano Makasarstruck po. Happy to see you virtually here on JMC. And from Shin Han, Butan na si Sir John. My aunt used to tell me his humble beginnings sa business niya sa Tagum. He's also very concerned towards his employees. God bless you, sir. And so those are our greetings coming from our audience. Once again, thank you very much, Sir John. And to award our Certificate of Appreciation to our distinguished speaker, may I request the Dean, Dr. Melcher Q. Bombeo, to award and read the citation. Uh, Sir John, for your rich insights and wisdom that you have shared today, no amount of pesos can pay for the contribution that you have shared to the community. So we humbly offer to you the certificate of appreciation and allow me to read. Jose Maria College, Philippine Japan, Friendship Highway, Sasa Davao City, College of Business Education. Awards this certificate of appreciation to John Young Gaisano Jr. for gener generously sharing his knowledge in the webinar entitled Retail Management in the New Normal, given the 16th day of November at Davao City, Philippines. Signed, Alexis B. Baligo II, BSBA Program Head, and signed, Melchor Q. Bombeo, CPA, DM, Dean College of Business Education. Sir John, as well as the others, or in the air, allow us to give you a virtual acknowledgement. Thank you so much, sir. So before we end, Sir John, is there anything you would like to add or plug for the benefit of our viewers? Oh. You know, this is an often invited. And uh, the audience always wants to know, what's the secret? Diba? Uh, the secret is really you. No? The secret is not with me. The secret is in everyone. As I have mentioned, it's uh, character, values, and attitude. You have it, you'll make it. Because in this world, uh, not many wanted to give their all. Not many want to work that hard. So those who work the hardest, who use their head, who is humble, open to to learn and always adjusting, no? and they are trustworthy. They are the ultimate winner. In the end, they are the one who is more likely to win. So it's in you. No? Nobody can take that away from you. No? To be a winner, loser, it's really with you. No? I have not yet seen people who are very accomplished and very successful, who are not once poor. Of course, unless a galing sa tatay nila sa grandfather. But those who started are, most of them are extremely poor. And they have nothing to start with. Literally nothing for their information. So wag mo sa eh, wala kong capital. Ay, hindi ko maniwala dyan. 
Diba? So these are the people who started with nothing, absolutely nothing. No. So I hope that's a, a, a motivation for you. And what I'm telling you is really true. So good luck, which I don't believe, hard work. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much, Sir John, and thank you to the Dean of the College of Business Education, Dr. Melcher Bombeo, to our panel, and of course, to our viewers for today. Indeed, this has been another substantive discussion of a topic that informs, inspires, and transcends on JMC Edit Trends. You can show your support by liking and sharing this live stream. So join us again next time, only here on JMC Edit Trends. This is Marian. Thank you for participating, and keep safe, everyone.